Hi, I hope you're joining us tonight for our next live in the series of uh, some things we're working on here inside of our personal home. Uh, tonight we are working in a spare bedroom and we're updating the furniture that we've carried around and moved from house to house. It's kind of taken a little bit of abuse and we wanted to just show you some ways to freshen up inside your own home using some of these easy products that we've developed at Heirloom Traditions Paint. Uh, tonight we're using a beautiful color called Cashmere and it's a bright white, probably uh, just a true white I would call it. There's no warmth to this white at all, but it's an awesome paint that requires no wax or no top coat to be finished. It also requires no priming. So what it does require is a good stir, and I would encourage you if you order this product to really make sure that you get a good stir stick, a good wooden stir stick, um, and really go inside the paint once you get it. This is a big tube, if you will, because this container is quite large. So really go in there and work and agitate this paint and kind of kick it up from the bottom. That's what I say, just kind of lift and pull. And you'll see there's some clear liquids when you get it at the top. Um, you want to really turn and agitate that paint for a couple minutes, at minimum a couple of minutes. And as you continue to use out of the jar, you want to keep on stirring this product. All the good stuff is kind of in the bottom. So remember that, all the bonding properties, also the dryers and all of that have came to the top of the paint, so you wanna bring those back into the paint and really turning it. I know a lot of people think they can shake it, but just remember that's something you have to do with this particular paint is you really need to stir it and agitate it to make it work properly to give you the right hide and to give you the right bonding and also the right drying ability of this paint product. So we have that kind of already taken care of. Tonight we're gonna to do a couple things. We're gonna paint the drawer fronts on this chest that I have sitting here. I've already started so you can see how it looks. This piece, I've already done a couple coats on this whole row, and on this, the last two drawers, is just one coat that I call my scratch coat. It's some, a coat that you just put on, knowing that it's not gonna be the best coat, but it's the first coat. And in this, the top drawer, I wanted to save so I could show you how wonderful this paint goes on. I've just poured out a little in my little uh, paper plate here, just a little to get going. The True Applicator is another tool that is our product at Heirloom Traditions. This is a fabulous tool. If you don't own one, I encourage you to get one. They're inexpensive. All of our retailers nationwide carry these tools. Um, you can order them from any retailer online if you're not in an area where we have a retailer. And you can do that by logging on to Heirloom Traditions Paint. And we'll also be posting links all night. If you have questions, anybody coming on, you have a question, post that question. We'll be sure and answer that for you and give you the link if you need a retailer or what have you, just ask that question and we'll post that right in the feed tonight as we go along. So, first thing you wanna do is dampen the, your applicator. If you start off with a dry applicator, the first thing it does is it wants to, first of all, it's stiff, but the second thing, it wants to absorb your paint. You don't want it to absorb your paint, so get it damp, or wet it, and then squeeze it out. Even make sure you get it pretty dry, and then start with your paint. So this drawer, I just want to show you how quickly this wipes on to this drawer. It doesn't drip, no runs, anything. It's just the easiest tool in the whole world to work with. So normally you take drawers out. There's what actually clothes in these drawers. I don't even have to worry about getting anything on them. Run right up the sides, simply just wipe it across. The only thing we did to prepare for this is take off the hardware. So that drawer is done. So I wanna show you on the bottom here, um, going over, load my brush back up pretty thoroughly this time. I wanna put quite a bit of paint on this because I'm going to pounce this on. The reason I'm gonna do that is I don't want any strokes or swipes to show. I always say this, I'm a stippler, so I even stipple with this sponge, meaning I put this texture motion in everything I do, and that's so I can hide my brush strokes or my motion that I'm doing. So you keep pouncing over it and you create a solid motion versus a linear or striping. Paula, <laughs> Brittany Bass would like to know, what is the dresser made of? It is, um, it's wood veneers over wood products, let's say. It's not a, an expensive furniture. I, it's something I had years ago and it's, um, we'll call it a wood specie, but it's not really wood. But Again, it feels like wood, and most people would think it's wood, it's heavy, it's nice. It's, it's what standard furniture is made of these days. It's a brand called Coaster, so hope that helps. But there's, it's not shiny, melamine, plastic coated. It does feel like wood, so it is a wood veneer that I'm painting on. I know that's convoluted there. 
We've got 54 people watching right now. Where are you? Where's anybody from? And Debbie Riddle said she tried the sponge today and she liked it. Debbie Riddle. Debbie is really knocking it out. Love the chair you did, Debbie. That was beautiful. And she was using the Heritage Collection. And um, what color were you using? Cathedral? Is that what she was using on her chair she did? Teresa Carr's on from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Hello, Teresa. Beth Heffernan from New Hampshire. Hi, Beth. Natalie Brooks from Western Australia. Wow. Which is, some, as I think it's sometime next week there. A little warm over there, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so just another coat going on down here. Again, watching the sides of the drawers. I'm just striping them and then going in and tapping on the next coat. Very important, you have to let always your first coat of paint dry, especially when you're working with whites. If you don't let the paint dry and you come in when this coat is a little bit soft, this coat will wet that coat and then you begin to remove them all. So it's very important to, this won't be ready for a second coat for another hour, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on where you are weather-wise, but just wait, come back after it's firmed up and put on your next coat. We have people from Georgia and Idaho and New Hampshire and Hi guys. all over the country signing in. Good deal. Glad y'all are here. We've gotten great response going on our lives um, in the last bit. And of course, you guys know I enjoy showing off our products and teaching you how to use them and teaching you how to transform things in your own home. Finishes that are, every finish in our home wears out. So uh, all of our products are designed to help you restore them, bring them back and extend the life of the things that you already own, make you enjoy them more, give things a fresh new look, just like this bedroom. This is a gorgeous bedroom suit and I had this beautiful white bed um, and this dark furniture and I wanted to kind of uh, give it a new look and put the white on the drawer fronts and I think it would lighten and brighten this whole room up. So also all of these pieces I had glass cut for the tops of these of the nightstands and this television cabinet so I'm also going to show you how to paint the glass top and we're painting on the back side of the glass and then of course it's totally protected because the paint is underneath so I'll show you in just a second how to do this. So back over here, just for a minute, we're almost finished here. I will go back and put on one more coat here on this. And it's dry enough I could do that, but I'll, I'll just show you. It's, uh, I put these on right before we went on, but it is, it will accept another coat. You can just see how much brighter and whiter that's gonna be. And I know you're probably thinking, well, that's gonna show all that texture with this sponge, but actually it really doesn't. Paint by nature is full of water. All paints are full of water and they shrink. When they dry, they shrink. So all of this risen texture that you're seeing will go down. It will all go flat. There'll, there'll be a mild texture there, but nothing that you could actually see using this sponge. What it really does is it gives you a very much a um, manufactured look rather than a brushed look or um, something that we'd see lines and brush texture in. It's much prettier, much more even and consistent, and it lets me get finished pretty quickly. So you can see I'm done there. So let's move over and I'll show you how to paint this glass. This is such a great trick. And again, talking about this furniture not being expensive furniture, I knew when I bought this that I wanted to give it a great look and make it have a great expensive feeling. So I went out to a glass store, measured the tops, and had a quarter inch piece of glass cut for those uh, for all the case pieces, including the big dresser that I had, and all of the pieces in the room had glass coated, glass covers on top of them, and it's protected the tops. This was in my son's bedroom, so obviously I knew he would not take care of this at one point, so I uh, had the glass tops made. So here we are. These tops have traveled around. They've been, you know, there's cuts and scri or chips on this one I saw in the corner here, but that's not going to hurt it. I'm going to turn that piece down and toward the back, but. First thing I did to get this thing ready, just to make this top look brand new and give it its own new look, I'm gonna move this paint around with my nice Syntec brush. This is a product from Heirloom Traditions and this thing has been around, let me tell you. Um, just put your paint down on top of a thin piece of glass. It doesn't really matter. When I get to the edge, I'm gonna work away so I don't have to worry about even putting down a drop cloth. I'm not much on drop cloths, guys, but I would encourage you to use them. Just work away from the edge. If you paint this way, you're going to 
uh, offload your brush over the edge. So just kind of think of that as you're working. Just turn it, just move this paint around all over. get a good coat on there. We're just trying to move it around all over the piece. Nothing, we're not worried about brush strokes at this moment, just good kind of even coating of it. And then we're gonna go back and texturize this and make it look very finished. Now, we're, one thing to remember about glass, glass contains lead and impurities. And those impurities and the, and will reflect a green cast. So this glass, once we're finished, won't look white. It'll look kind of a mint green, which is really beautiful and works well in this room. But just know that when you're working with glass and painting it, no matter what color you paint it, it's gonna have a green glow to it, which is really beautiful. Like this desk, um, take a quick shot of that desk. That desk has been, is just painted glass. And it's painted with a silverized finish and it's manufactured that way. But that's because the green in the glass, there's no silver or there's no green in the paint underneath. It's the silver, but that thick glass with the impurities give it that green look. So here we go. After moving the paint around, first thing I want you to do is take out your applicator, pounce around, just kind of around the outsides. And you can see already that this fabulous applicator gives this thing, just in minutes, the nice, smooth, little texture not hard to get this thing to look great. Actually, I've already done one, and you can see that on the nightstand over here. If Craig get a picture of that one as I finish up here, show you what that looks like. Just a nice, pretty look. I think it kind of gave it that hotel suite just a little bit, and since this is a guest room for us, I kind of wanted everybody that stayed to kind of have that experience. You know, it's kind of a Nice little getaway, and uh, I sneak in here myself sometime. Mindy Clark asks, where do I get this paint? You get this paint. Um, I think Melissa's with us tonight, and she'll post a link there to the Heritage Collection, and so she, you can go visit there. Uh, we do have retailers. Uh, do It Best Hardware is a partner with us, and they will be carrying our products nationwide in over 3,800 stores. And we're just getting uh, geared up right now with Do It Best Hardware. So you can also check with your local Do It Best Hardware to find the Heritage Collection products there. And if they're not there, they're coming soon. So also you can look online. We do have other retailers uh, who are carrying the product that are not Do It Best Hardware. So check out our website and go to the uh, retailer tab and look in the map and put in your zip code and you can find a local retailer. So now um, here we are, we're done. and. Just so you can, I'm gonna kind of flip this up so you can see the back side of it. As that's pretty solid. I, I can't see myself, but I can tell there's no light coming through it. I'd probably put on a second coat just because. Um, I don't see anything light. Also take my finger, just kind of run around the edge, just because you don't want a, a painted edge. Take a paper towel, be probably the smart thing to do. Just kind of make sure you got it all cleaned off. And if you happen to have some on the edge that dries, you can take a little probably a wet paper towel when it's kind of damp and remove it. This paint really bonds to anything and it gives a nice smooth velvet texture and it doesn't have a sheen. It's going to have, or a, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a shine, but it has a low luster sheen, a nice velvety finish. And it's kind of unlike any other paint there is out there. There's a lot of paints that claim to have primers built in and that kind of thing. This paint has above and beyond any primer built into it, as well as its own finish that is a chalk feel. So it has that beautiful aged and time-worn look or you can achieve that. Uh, there's also a glaze in the product line and it's in a weathered wood gel finish which is a, nor a wonderful easy to work with product and it also is something that you can choose to use or you don't have to use. There's kits available so you can kind of get everything in one kit if you want it as well. So uh, if you have questions please ask them. Uh, I will be going back looking at the at the feed and seeing if there's anything I can help someone with. You can also always reach us through the website through heirloomtraditionspaint.com and uh, we're glad to help you any way we can and I uh, sure appreciate everyone coming on tonight and hope you've enjoyed this project. Please share your projects with us and always use the hashtag HTPaint and we can always see those and uh, share them. We'd love to uh, share your projects. So again, thank you for joining us and we look forward to the next time. We see you next time on live.